What's up everyone? This is Alex Room from alexroomsound.com and today I'm going to show you how to properly mix a rap beat. Before we get into it, go over to Instagram and hit me up with a follow at alexroomsound. I make a bunch of beat making videos. It's just a good time. Okay, so the way this video is going to go is we're going to start off with our drums. We're going to get a nice balance on them. Uh, spread the necessary drums, EQ the kick a little bit, make sure that they're all even, and then we're going to move on to all the melodic parts like the leads, the bass, the chords, and stuff like that, and we're going to EQ them and pan the necessary components of that, and we're also going to do some spreading in there as well. And what we're going to shoot for in the end is the snare, kick, and sub bass being the only things in the center, everything else is going to get spread to the outsides. Now with a rap song, the only leads that should be in the center pan are going to be the vocals, snare, kick, and sub bass. So if it's not one of those things, we're going to spread them and panning, and I'm going to show you how to do that today. So this is our unmixed beat here. It sounds like this. And it also has a hook right here sounds like this so as you can hear it's really off balance there are zero dynamics whatsoever so we definitely have to fix that make sure our kick remains thumpy but also not too loud at the same time so let's go ahead into our drums uh, the way I have this organized is I have all the drums in a track stack and to track stack things you just click whatever you want included in that track stack right click and create a track stack there it's not letting me because I already did that um, but up here I also have a track stack with our melodic layers And then alone by itself, I have bass. Track stacking is organization, but organization is mixing. So I would highly recommend narrowing the amount of layers down to as little as possible. And so track stacking allows us to do that. Because if we close these up, our entire beat is three layers. So let's get into the drums. And we're going to do these first. Let's start out with drums, the drums in like order of significance, if you will. So I'm going to just press these all down. And then we have our kick and our snare. And what you want to do with your kick and snare is just make sure that they're balanced appropriately. Make sure neither of them are sticking out over the other. <clears throat> so that's a decent balance between both of them. They were kind of already balanced, so I didn't have to do anything. And before we move on, I'm going to throw an EQ on this kick. And take out that tonal layer that I hate so much, that 200 range. Uh, this way it'll kind of blend together well with the bass more because it'll be more of like a sub bassy kick rather than a 200 range kick and for some reason when you dip out 200 the kick somehow gets louder it gets like it's or it doesn't get louder it just gets bigger and right there we got a nice thumpy kick Let's bring in our open hi-hat, and uh, before we do that, I want to mention that I am balancing on low volume right now. What I recommend doing with balancing is to do it on low volume first, and then do it on medium volume, and kind of make sure everything's balanced, and fix balancing on medium volume if you don't like the sound at medium volume, and then go to loud volume and balance again if things are like off and sound weird. So 
So I just want to make sure that my open hi-hat doesn't go past that snare. And I'm going to pan this. You could throw a sample delay or spread an open hi-hat. I'm just going to pan this one to the right because my closed hi-hat I'm going to throw a sample delay on and it's going to sound like it's louder in the left ear naturally. But without sample delay it sounds like this. So when I turn this on you can hear it shoots over the left ear. Very important to pan your hi-hats. If your hi-hats are in the center they just crash into your vocals and some letters and vowels get cut off. Not really vowels actually, uh, more like le um, like the harder letters get kind of crashed by the hi-hats if you keep your hi-hats in the center. So really make sure you're thinking about your vocalists. We have a chant. Let's just bud nudge that to the right. And then we have two a uh, couple claps here. It's really essential that I make sure these do not get louder than the snare. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to nudge one to the right and then the other to the left. Really make sure in rap music to take full advantage of panning because it just makes everything sound as cool as it could possibly sound and also it leaves room for your vocalist. So your vocalist is going to be in the center and you're going to have all this shit kind of going crazy in the left and the right ears. It just makes it sound really awesome. So I'd highly recommend making sure you do that. So at low volume, this is sticking out a little bit. These could probably come down to decibel. If anything gets too quiet, we can just bring them back up later. So at high volume, that all sounds pretty good. So let's go ahead, go back down to low volume and bring in the bass. I like to keep my bass just slightly under the level of the kick. That way the kick remains like there there remains a thump in the kick. Whereas uh, in some rap beats the bass is just as loud as the kick and the kick just sounds like tiny and worthless and I hate beats like that. So what I try to do is just keep a little bit of thump in the uh, kick by making it slightly louder than the bass. Uh, another crucial thing is to sidechain, so I'm going to open up a compressor on the bass line, come up here to sidechain, and navigate to my kick. And then we're going to go down to sidechain, external, external source, and make sure that we sidechain as lightly as possible, because this is, this is rap music, it's not electronic music where the sidechain is hard and aggressive. This one has to be seamless like it's not even there. So we just need to sidechain really lightly. My bass. So there's how much gain reduction I'm experiencing right now. And that's all right, sounds good. Uh, I can't really hear beyond what I'm hearing now because all I have is headphones and monitors without any subwoofer or anything so I can't really tell if there's any ducking going on in the sub bass but that will be crucial for me to check and the way I check that is in my car 
because I have a subwoofer in there and it just makes it really easy to um, know if you have your bass mixed right. So now we got our kicks, or, or our drums, and our uh, bass. They sound really good, uh, for now at least. Let's go ahead and start bringing in our melodic instruments from most significant to least significant. So we're going to start with an important lead layer here. I'll get a fresh EQ so I could do this from scratch for you guys. I'm gonna EQ these leads down. First thing I see is some resonating frequencies. I'm gonna low cut. something like that leave a lot uh, a lot of room up here really important when you have vocals because you want your vocals to kind of shine through and make sure they come through and you can hear them um, as well as you possibly can and then I'm gonna add a spreader come down to imaging stereo spread and then you spread these and that's gonna make these as wide as you can hear them. You never want your leads in the center of your mix. If it's just an instrumental, you wanna throw it up on YouTube to show people what you, what you got, um, then yeah, it's okay to keep your leads panned to the center. Um, but if you wanna put vocals on there, you gotta get the lead out of the center by spreading them or panning them. If you're running a couple lead layers, you can get fancy with putting one lead, lead layer in the right ear and the other in the left ear and it, you get a nice balanced uh, wide stereo effect. But if you have a single lead layer, I would highly recommend just spreading the lead or panning it and running off balance. So these are pretty dry. So what I would do is add a bust reverb here. I have Vintage Valhalla bust. Let's go into the uh, chords. So these are cool because they're already panning from left to right ear, so I don't need to spread them. But I do need to EQ these, so let's add a fresh EQ here. And these chords, we want them as close as possible to the bass line, but we don't want them to crash into the bass line. So what I'm gonna do is kind of like imitate a roll off here. And so let's go into these chords and I'm gonna add a little bit of reverb because they are a little dry. And then we have this layer right here. I'm gonna turn on some reverb here. Just so it can like squirt over the top. I have this also panned to the right and we're gonna add an EQ and low cut this. With sounds like this, it's okay to take a lot out of the bottom because you already have your lower frequency things like the chords and the bass kind of handling this range down here. Finally, let's get on to these counter melodies here. I'm actually not gonna do this one. I don't, I don't like this layer. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. So we have this vocal. Let's pan this immediately. You never want that to be in the center because that will just crash right on into your vocalist. And I like to add some echo. Let's add a big reverb, an obvious reverb there. Just like that and we could low cut this but there's not really much down there and it's not that big of a sound so I wouldn't stress doing something like that so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine the drums bass and melodic layers 
I'm gonna do this at low volume. Make sure I can still hear everything. Now I'm going to turn the volume up and make sure nothing's kind of sticking out. Uh, the kick is a little fierce. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you took any value from it, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. I definitely want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. And subscribe here if you're new. I would really appreciate that. Again, follow my Instagram at Alec from Sound. It's a good time over there. Peace out, guys.